In this video, we will be discussing fuses and relays. In the lifetime of a vehicle, there is always a possibility that a fuse will blow. This is not a crisis, but it does mean that there will be a component in your car that will no longer work and is a built-in safety precaution to protect the various electronic components of your car. If any electrical system fails, the fuse box should be the first place to check. There are generally two types of fuses. Older cars have glass cylinder shaped fuses with steel in the ends. Newer cars have a plastic housing with a fusible link in the middle between two metal prongs. The fuse box will be located in various places in the vehicle depending on the make and model, but is usually located under the dash or in the engine compartment. See your owner's manual for more information. You might need a pair of tweezers or long nose pliers to remove the blown fuse. Here is an example of what a new and a blown fuse looks like. The most important thing to remember when replacing a blown fuse is to make sure that the new fuse has the same amperage as the old one. If the amperage is different, you could blow the fuse again or damage the circuit that the fuse is protecting. When inserting the new fuse, the actual process is straightforward just insert it. However, with the older glass fuses, you need to press the ends in one at a time. Relays. These are basically remote switches and come in various sizes, shapes and uses. The average vehicle has about 20 of them and are located in various places in the vehicle. Usually they are in the engine compartment, behind kick panels or under the dash and are sometimes grouped along with fuses. The covers for the fuse boxes should have a diagram that clearly label each fuse and relay. Relays are remote controlled switches that are controlled by other switches such as the hooter or a computer like the ECU. They allow a small current to control a high current. They can come in 3 to 6 pin and either single or dual switches. Relays all operate using the same principle. It has a control circuit which has a small control coil and a load circuit which has a switch. The coil controls the operation of the switch between energized and de-energized positions. Current will flow through the control coil, which is pin 1 and 3, which will create a small magnetic field causing the switch, which is in pins 2 and 4, to close and a larger current to flow through those pins. A relay becomes de-energized when the current flowing to the control circuit stops and the magnetic field stops. The switch opens and the current flowing to pins 2 and 4 stops. Relays come in two default configurations, normally open and normally closed. Normally open relays are always open until a current flows through them and normally closed relays are closed until a current flows through them. A 3-pin relay has only one pin, which is pin 1. A current splits inside the relay and supplies the current to both circuits. A 5-pin relay has one control circuit, but two paths for the switch. When a 5-pin relay is de-energized or off, pins 4 and 5 have continuity, and when it is on, pins 3 and 5 have continuity. ISO Standard Relays ISO stands for the International Standards Organization. ISO relays were designed to standardize relay connections, making them easier to test and design. Today, these are used by nearly all vehicle manufacturers. Relays come in two sizes, micro and mini. Mini is 2.5 square centimeters and micro is 2.5 by 2.5 by 1.25 centimeters, which is half as thick as the mini relay voltage spikes. When the switch is closed, current flows through the coil from positive to negative and in turn creates a field around the coil. When the switch is opened, current stops flowing through the control circuit and the field around the coil collapses, inducing a voltage into itself and creating a reverse polarity spike of several hundred volts. The top will still carry 12 volts but the bottom can be charged with 200 plus volts. Current will then flow from the bottom back to the top. Voltage suppression relays. Relays are usually controlled either by computers or semiconductors. 
When controlled by semiconductors, they need a voltage suppression device because of the voltage spikes that we spoke about. High ohm resistors, diodes or capacitors are used to solve this, but diodes and resistors are the most common. A relay will be clearly marked if one of these is present. Relays with despiking diodes. A despiking or clamping diode is connected in parallel with the relay coil. When the relay is on, this diode will be in reverse orientation so that no current will flow through the diode. When the relay is off, a reverse voltage is induced. When the bottom of the diode reaches 0.7 volts more than the top, the diode becomes forward orientated, which allows the voltage to pass and thereby completing the circuit to the other end of the coil. The current keeps on flowing around the diode and the coil until the voltage has dissipated. Relays with despiking resistors. These are the alternative option to diodes. They are more durable than diodes and allows current to flow through while the relay is on, but the resistor must be rated for about 600 ohms for it to be effective, but they still aren't as effective as diodes. Circuit identification. Relays are very easy to test, but the pins need to be clearly identified first. Many manufacturers print a pin ID on the relay case to show which pins belong to the control circuit and which belong to the load circuit. Please like and subscribe. Keep on the lookout for more upcoming videos.